computer. I'm early because I'm usually late. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, oh, brilliant. Yes, do you want to miss this? Awesome. Good, good. I know it's an awesome topic. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it going here in a couple minutes, but I'm so glad that you're early. My dad always taught me, um, in order to be on time, you need to be early. Otherwise you're late. And that's how I grew up. And yeah. it was funny because my dad was always the one to be on time for everything. And my mom was always the one to be like 10 minutes late, not ridiculously late, but not really on time either. She considered herself on time, but it would drive <laughs> my dad nuts for that push and pull. And he would he would go and say, okay, that's it. I'm gonna go wash the car. Like that was a threat to get her to like finish her makeup or whatever it was that she was doing right before we left to be on time for something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm neurotically on time, so I tend to be early. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. And we have Andrea. Yay. Hello, ladies. Welcome. Get super focused on a task, and I look for an hour gone. Yeah, it's true. You can, I did that last Friday. I had to the Facebook Live for our group. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go check this one thing. And then all of a sudden I look and I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> Five minutes late now. Now I got to sign in, you know, <laughs> get the thing. Da, da, da. And Jody's here. Great. Hello. Welcome. Um, we are going to kick this off in about five minutes. So thank you guys for being early. Um, people are signing in. So we want to give everybody a chance. This is great. And Jeanette. And there's a, there's a lot of people signed up for this today. So it obviously is a topic that we all need to hear about. And um, everyone's thankfully busy because COVID made people stay home and they had to look at their ugly house and say, it is finally time that I'm going to do that thing. And I didn't go on the vacation, so the money is there. So it's been very good for the industry in that way. The lead times are horrible, but everything else business-wise is good. So. This is, uh, this is really needed. Jeanette's here, welcome. Joni, okay. We're still signing in. Welcome if you're here for the first time. I'm Heather. I run the Designers Collaborative and we are joined with Melissa Clark from MC Virtual Assistance. Yes. And answer all your questions. Yeah, excited to be here. Yeah. Okay, well, while we wait, I will tell you the funny story. Okay. So we had our mastermind this past, was it last week? I'm so like, what what day is it? Yes. So the end of the end of the month is when we have our masterminds. And our topic was um, systems and process for how you run your business and keeping everything you know, running and everything. And so of course, you know, we start off with like, well, I use my Doma, I use da, 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 you know, and it runs in da, 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 da. But eventually we wind up talking about like, okay, but now you need to hire someone to do those things because, you know, you got to a place in your system, it's doing everything it can do to help you. Now it's time to hire. And yeah. um, so we were talking about like who to hire, and you know, a couple companies were mentioned, and so you were referred to as British Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so maybe on your business card, put British Melissa. Yes. Parentheses. The British one. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's the British Melissa, right? Yes, yes. that's the British Melissa. <laughs> Brilliant. I love yeah. that. But I, I mean, that, that means they're connecting the dots, right? Into who you are okay. and your company. So that's a good thing. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, that's good. Not mm -hmm. going to be losing the accent anytime soon. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, what, five years now I've been in the US. Mm -hmm. But yeah, still. Uh, still are you picking it. up any Jersey in? Is that um, rubbing off? Not really. Okay. No, I find if anything, <laughs> we're just saying like the American words for things. Oh, yes. Rather than the British words. Yes. So, you know, it's sidewalk, not pavement. It's, it's oh. rubbish. 
yeah it's, yeah it's pants not trousers it's <laughs> diaper not nappy it's you know it, oh, it's a yeah. lot of a lot of different words yes but, you know, with the kids it's important they know the correct words <laughs> daniel says hi british melissa <laughs> oh you're a brummy <laughs> 33 years yes i've been in five and again like the accents she'll know a change in the uk i think uh -huh. for such a small country yeah there's probably about 15 different accents mm -hmm. depending I, on where i saw a really cute <laughs> in, video in of... britain you come from so. right yeah i saw a really cute yeah. video of um a guy doing a weather forecast in the accent of wherever he was talking about. <laughs> so it just yeah. kept changing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. sort of at four, you know, Newcastle, sort of, you know, the jolly accent. Even I sometimes struggle to understand what some <laughs> sometimes, you know, they, they can be saying. Um, yeah, Liverpool, Manchester all have their own accents and then right down to the south, you know, mm -hmm. on the uh, in deepest Cornwall and Devon, they have they have their own accents as well. So yeah, well, <laughs> I think it's a it's a good it's a plus in the in the categories. So well, Americans good. love a British accent. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. do. It's just true. And that's good to know. I've been uh, <laughs> sort of singled as the the British Melissa. That yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe use it in your branding. Yes. <laughs> We got more people signing on and we got one minute till it's actually noon so i want to give everyone a chance to get in so thank you for arriving early everybody um we will kick this off officially in one minute so thank you so much for being here on time okay yeah you could even do like just a, a british flag on the card somewhere just a little subtle yeah <laughs> I mean, you, your artwork behind you is perfect. Yes, actually, I get comments <laughs> <in there. laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the good British telephone box, which mm -hmm. are, you know, sadly, really no more. They've kind right. of all just. Yeah. I've seen them in antique stores where you can yes. pick them up and like do fun exactly. things with them. So. They are they are sort of desired antiques now, and people mm -hmm. have them in their gardens, and you know they can get yeah. stolen things because they're yeah they just don't exist anymore mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> ours were so lame they were just like boxes of metal and glass and your your uh your british ones are pretty cool yeah <laughs> yeah okay so it is officially noon so we're going to kick it off now so okay. thank you for everyone for joining i'm heather mcmanus from the designers collaborative and i'm so happy to bring melissa clark otherwise known as the british melissa to <laughs> to tell us about hiring a virtual assistant and it is definitely a topic i think everyone is interested in if you've gotten to a place with like so much that you can do with your software and you've you've implemented things then it's you know you're going to take that next step and and get the help that you need with running your business and um personal testimony the designers collaborative just hired melissa's company mc virtual assistants to hire our first um design assistant and she's handling administrative stuff and it's like God, <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're really excited to, to have been um, at the place where we said, okay, we need help and actually got it done. So, um, so Melissa is going to talk to us about the frequently asked questions that designers have. And she read off the list already to me. We got a lot to cover. So Melissa, go ahead. <laughs> Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, yes, I am Melissa with MC Virtual Assistants. Um, we solely support interior designers. So with their uh, administrative, procurement, project management needs primarily, uh, I was saying to Heather, probably a good 80% of the inquiries we get are designers like yourselves who are wearing all the hats and are tired of wearing all the hats, um, not having enough hours in a day, want to get some evenings and weekends back and basically need to start delegating and the good place to start with that is that back office support mostly you know you're a standalone designer you may have a design assistant or you know somebody you outsource your draftings to you probably have a bookkeeper 
um but it's somebody there that can help support you with that sort of back office role of okay you know let's just get stuff done and you know we have orders coming out of our ears project management needs um you know sick of probably people calling you and saying i'm trying to deliver this or this is coming damaged or you know where's my area rug that i ordered three months ago <laughs> so it's having that person there to help you with that role so um where do we start what can a va help me with um i'm going to share my screen now i think heather you gave me access good work to yep. do so um mm -hmm. so this is our website um feel free to you know peruse this at your uh will later but we do have a services page so um a few things we can help you with primarily like i said we're there for the admin back office procurement sort of purchasing role so administrative support general day-to-day -day, inbox management calendar management scheduling meetings with clients um vendors uh helping support with creating processes and documents um we're not there to come in and tell you how to run your business but we can certainly help with um setting things up for you like you know you may have asana you may have already started it we can help come in and you know streamline how that works you might already have written down somewhere on a piece of paper <laughs> your operating procedures we can help make those look pretty and actually be an official document uh, a welcome packet for clients um helping with setting up software uh data entry um all of those sort of general day-to-day -day administrative tasks that ultimately you don't need to be doing because it's freeing up the time for you then to be going on to be doing other things um the big one is uh procurement and purchasing so this is where there's a key you know need most of our designers feel they need the support so this is literally everything from when you have specified an item for a client so whether that be furnishing lighting hardware whatever it is uh right through to delivery so help getting that quoted um using tdc or other other methods getting quotes for things once a client has signed off on a cost getting that item entered into your design management software whatever that is that you're using whether that be studio or ivy or my domo or any other one um creating a proposal getting that proposal sent to the client once they approve the proposal uh getting getting an invoice getting the money in getting the invoice sent out following up on the invoice if needed um creating then the purchase orders sending the purchases out to the rent for purchase orders out to the vendors um confirming the orders paying for the orders um getting the ship dates um updating all of that information into your system getting some sort of tracker together so then you know when a client sort of saying to you where is that so far it's it's back order to september mid-september you know you know <laughs> off the bat where it is um tracking that through following up on deliveries once it comes into the receiving warehouse is it damaged do we need a replacement making sure it's here that it's the right one and it's not the different color that's been shipped or something else is wrong <laughs> um and then helping coordinate with the uh install um communication with vendors sending resale certificates setting up vendor accounts things like that can be time consuming as well they need relevant paperwork so you know we can support with setting up those sort of accounts as well um com ordering fabrics making sure that the right material is going to the right vendor for the right product um things like that as well um so there's a whole host of steps that go on in that procurement process um some more complex than others depending on what it is that you're ordering and where from um but as much or as little support as you need <laughs> in that process we can do um we have some vas who literally just act as procurement manager 
so they literally you know the designer already has a design assistant they may already have an admin assistant but they need that person to come in and just get a handle on the procurement so that you know that VA will come in and do 20 hours a month and that's purely all they do just handle the uh, the procurement side um some of our VAs do also have um support you know more of a marketing background so we can help with um, updating your website uh, you know, Squarespace, Wix, they're the popular ones. Um, you change your phone number, you, you know, you have a new, a new project that you've taken to photography for, you want to upload those images. <laughs> so things like that basic website update, we're not, we're not website builders, you know, chances are you've <laughs> already used another company for, for that, but we can help keep those sort of things updated, your house profile or NKBA profile and the sort of things like that up to date. Um, social media management, some of our VAs do have um, experience with that. So we can help you, um, you know, coordinate that and keep that updated. Uh, newslettered, internal branded documents, um, client sort of services, client gifts. So, you know, I think we'd all like to be more proactive in that area. Um, <laughs> You know, when you sign on new clients, sending out welcome gifts, sending out birthday cards, um, whatever it might be in, in that respect, um, as well as also some general sort of day to day support with client services. So, again, some of our VA just purely support with that function. We have uh, a client who's a busy design firm and the VA, all she does is just field new inquiries. So she just takes new inquiry calls, responds to them on email, mm. sends out the information packet, schedules yeah. the inquiry calls. That'll suck away some time. Yes, it does. Yeah. So the, and, and that, that you know, uh, when you're so busy dealing yes. with what you have and right. all those client inquiries are coming in, it can, that can be overwhelming in itself. And it, it disrupts um, your flow, you know, yes. because you want to get back to that person right away. So stop what you're doing, you know, try and onboard this new person and really, you know, it, then you kind of like go back to your work and go, okay, where was I? Yeah. How do I deal with that? Mm -hmm. How do I cope with that? So right. again, it's a comfort level of, you know, VA can call with a script of this is, you know, what we offer, you know, we're currently booking out until September. For some clients, new inquiries, that time frame doesn't work. So, but it's it's good to have that first sort of point of contact that's not mm -hmm. you <laughs> reaching out to that inquiry, um, putting that sort of barrier between the designer and that new inquiry to say, this is us, this is what we do, these are the costs, this is our time frame currently that we're onboarding. If that works for you, great, we'll schedule a call and they can help coordinate you know that discovery call or consultation or whatever it might be uh, mm -hmm. with you um but they've almost been sort of pre-screened but before you're having to sort of look at them um which can help as well um and support with actually getting then clients on board it so creating LOAs you know not, not creating them but helping you formulate them, update them, send them out via some sort of e-signature software. You know, you may already have CRM systems like Dubsada in place, or if not, DocuSign, things like that. Um, but actually getting them onboarded into your system as a, as a client. So they are our call services. Um, some of our uh, VAs also have uh, a design background. So they are having interior design degrees, they can support with drafting, rendering, sourcing, mood boards, um, those sort of tasks as well. So it purely depends on what it is that you're looking for, but chances are we're able to provide as little <laughs> or as much help as needed. Um, that sort of, you know, ties up with the next one of what's the experience of the VAs. Um, so our VAs all have experience working in the industry. Um, they are either have a business background, um, sort of more of a marketing administration business background, but they have worked with interior designers or they have uh, an interior design degree, a design based background. Uh, they may have already had in person positions pre pandemic, you know. That's what's happened. A lot of people then got laid off and, you know, now working from home virtually, um, wanting to find that flexibility. So all of our VAs 
understand the industry, which is key. Um, how do you get assigned a VA? How do I give you a VA? So um, we, you would reach out, um, we would have a discovery call. Uh, and in that call, I un understand a bit more about your current operations, what software systems you're using, um, how you, what it is that you need, what time zone you're on, all those sort of things I take into consideration. Um, and then I match you with the VA who I think is going to be the best fit for you based on your requirements. What mm -hmm. it is for. And having gone through this, um, there's a form similar to a lot of designers have when they're asking, um, you know, a new client before you've actually talked to them, you know, what's your design style? What are you looking to achieve? So Melissa also has a form that you fill out that kind of gets you thinking about you know, ahead of time, what it is that you're looking for and, and help wise. So she's even prepped for your call and you kind of dive in and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have been asked before if, you know, if anyone could see like profiles of VA, you know, can you send me a few profiles of VAs you have? Well, there's no point in me doing that because again, it could be that that particular VA doesn't have experience using studio designer, but you need, you use studio designer. So we only sort of supply the profiles once we have the call, mm -hmm. um, and at that point, yes, you would be matched with a VA um, and their profile sent over. Um, VAs, uh, all of our VAs are based in the US, so there's only like a three hour time difference from West Coast to East Coast. So they are able to work within your time zone. You will be able to communicate with them during normal business hours. Um, some of our clients actually have more than one VA. So, you know, the question is, can I have multiple VAs? Depending on requirements, again, yes. Um, whether you need 10 hours a month or some clients, we support them for 60, 70 hours a month. Mm. We have a VA who just does design work for them, who helps with sourcing, mood boards, uh, red drafting, those sort of things. And then we have more of a sort of admin-based VA. So that's something we can certainly look at um to tailor to your requirements of what you need as well um how do vas manage their workloads that's a question i get asked um yes our vas work with you know clients other design clients chances are they will be working with other design clients as well as yours um they all have a set availability that they want to work some of our vas do 150 hours a month some only do 50 hours a month, you know, some of them are, are mums, they have <laughs> other personal commitments. So it's, it's sort of up to them to manage their workloads and their day. Equally, if the specific requirements that you have of, you know, I need my VA to be online between 10 and 12 every day, or I want somebody that can do weekly calls on a Friday at noon, <laughs> whatever that is, Again, I think we can all take into consideration upon that initial match. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter maybe when they're working on your thing behind the scenes. It's a matter of like, if there's a deadline, they yes. would be able to meet that deadline, I would think. Exactly. Totally. And managing mm -hmm. expectations. And, you know, the VAs really are flexible in exactly that, Heather, when they sort of get the work done. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if it's more of a client facing role, then they need to be available during business hours to be sending client updates um, and to be connecting with the designer as well. Um, but ultimately, yes, if there's work to be done and there's tasks to be done, then that's something that, you know, can be agreed and to be done within a certain time frame. Yeah, because I think That's designers work this way too. You know, yes. it's after we've gotten our life out of the way that we then can sometimes concentrate on the thing we needed to do to make money. And unfortunately, yeah. sometimes that's the way it works. Yeah. So. And, you know, when you have that sort of task that you need to get head deep in sometime, you know, doing that between six and 10 o'clock at night <laughs> is when it works best for a designer or even on a Sunday. Um, you know, if the VA chooses to work weekends, then that's their discretion um but you know we don't ask them to um you know we only ask they are available between nine to six mm -hmm. uh, you know nine to five sort of working hours um, um yeah so i've been asked about vacation cover what happens if a va takes a holiday 
you know, and I don't have cover. Well, we depending on how long that is, <laughs> we'd all love to have a month off, but that never happens. Um, <laughs> so we can always provide cover if needed, um, if it's a you know extended time, a couple of weeks. Uh, equally, we can look and see. It all depends on the number of hours your package is. If you're on a ten-hour month package, chances are if a VA takes two two weeks off, they can make those hours up in the month. If you're on a forty-hour package then maybe making those hours up will be a little bit tougher so we can look to work with you with that and to you know generally speaking we don't roll hours over in packages but on occasions like that we can look to roll roll time over if there's vacation so again we can be flexible working with you on that um vas are all able to track their time so if you have studio design or iv quickbooks whatever it is uh, then our VA, a lot of our VAs do log their time internally against your systems. So that is, and we, we track it on the back end as well. But if you bill hourly and it's something you want to be billed out to clients, depending on what it is the VA is doing for you, then that's certainly something that they can do as well. So you know where their time is going and it can be, you know, filled out accordingly specifically if it's design work things like mood board or drafting or rendering or sourcing or, or things like that um talking of time and you know how hours are used um i got asked okay well it's 20 hours a month that's an hour a day what happens if you know they use five hours in one day <laughs> um again that time is yours to be used how you want it to be used through the month if you want the VA to be available every day in the inbox, checking emails, responding to vendors, responding to clients, then that hour a day is generally how things go. Some days they might do an hour and a half, other days they may only do half an hour. Um, equally, if you have set tasks that you want them to do, I really need this welcome packet doing, or I will need this move board doing, then yes, it might be that they do three hours one day for you, um, and then nothing the next day, and then two hours the next day. You know, we don't like to use all of those hours at the start of the month and obviously leave you with nothing through the rest of the month. Uh, the but likewise, always... if it if it went over, you would sort of tell them, yes. by the way, we're at this many hours. Do you want to add some for this month? Because it'll just yeah. be a little extra money at the end. Yeah, exactly. So we do recommend weekly meetings. Um, they are depending on the number of hours, but they are a good way to keep in touch, keep lines of communication open, have that once a week touch point. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, keep post, keep updated of, of number of hours, you know, okay, I'm at 15 this month already. And then that's totally down to design to so say, okay, well, look, hold back. I don't want to go over the 20 or that's fine. Just do what you need to do. Just keep me updated. So yeah. that's, yeah. I know for Tracy and I, this is like, we have no idea how long this task that we've given her is going to take. So yeah. how, where yeah. are we? Are we way under? Are we way over? And so I, I imagine that anybody who hasn't done this before is sort of like, well, I don't know how many hours I can yeah. use, but it's you can start small and add yeah. if needed. So that's amazing. That's the majority of what happens is exactly mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you know, most designers are new to the concept of a VA, haven't worked with a VA before. It can be daunting to sort of make that initial commitment. Um, so, yes, we can certainly say we'll start out smaller on, on the 10 hours. That's our minimum package and, and see where we go. Um, and, you know, most of the time it, it, it grows. Um, I had a client who started out 20 hours a month sort of three months ago. She's now on 40 hours a month. <laughs> yeah. So that's <laughs> I bet it's addicting too. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, please take this as well. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. that's you know what what we like and what we aim for as well, because mm -hmm. the more comfortable you get with delegating, the more you're able to delegate and the more you're able to free up for yourself to be taking on new clients, new projects, right. to be, you know, be moving the needle if you Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Within your I, yeah. That's exactly what you would be hired for. Help yeah. us take care of this and then we can do more of that. And I imagine it would work the opposite way too, where you know that designer who took on 40 hours, maybe they hit a lull and they wanna go back to 20 or something that you would adjust it. it exactly that as well. Um, so if, you know, God forbid they lost some projects or as you say, they went into a bit of a lull then we can totally adjust and downgrade you know, it, it's month to month, essentially. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a two month minimum um, sign up, but from there it's it's month to month. So exactly that. If they like, they yeah, beautifully really busy. flexible. Yeah. And then like actually, you know what? We're not looking that busy over the holidays. Like you know, end of the year is quieting down. Then we can say, okay, that's fine. We can downgrade. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just like to make sure that whoever the VA is, they have that capacity for you so when we match you with the up, 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 up front you know whilst we say okay we can start at 10 if you see this growing to maybe a 30 hour position potentially then we just need to make sure that the VA that you get assigned can give you that eventually because you know the last thing we want is to match you with somebody it go really well you'd be growing you want to delegate more and then it's like well no they literally just have 20 hours to give you you know they, they can't give you 40 hours a month so that's mm -hmm. just something as well, at, you know, at the front that we take into consideration with capacities. Planning yeah. ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it can take, you know, a couple of months to get up and running with a VA, so get that, get that, that ask that. Again, it's all depending on the number of hours. Um, you know, a 10 hour a month plan is, is the same as a 40 hour a month plan, but over four months. <laughs> so, you know, what a VA on a 40 hour a month plan would do in one month on a 10 hour month plan would be over four months. So it, it depends on the number of hours, but it can take a couple of months to get up and running into the groove, you know, into a rhythm, understanding how each other works, um, establishing those methods of communication and managing expectations and deadlines. And it can take, especially if you're sort of new to the concept of a BA and delegating. A lot of designers, you know, say to me up front, I, I don't know how to delegate. I'm rubbish at delegating. Like I, I can't let go. Like mm. I struggle with with delegating, mm -hmm. and that's that's a skill in itself as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's something that you know a designer sort of has to be at that point of like I can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, happy to give it away. To be happy and sort of have accepted that that's something they need to do as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I imagine on top of the willing to let go, there's also a um, a benefit for someone who's a little bit more organized than somebody who, you know, you start with that VA the first day and you go, I don't know what you should do. <laughs> Whereas yes. if you've thought about it ahead of time, you can say, I need you to do these three things right away. And then yes. when you're done with that, we can think about the next three things. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, exactly, exactly yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, really sort of identifying those areas that are going to help. Um, and, you know, I think we've said this before about what don't you like doing? What don't you love doing? You know, mm -hmm. some designers may enjoy ordering. <laughs> That's a crazy person, but they must yeah. exist. <laughs> some may. Um, so it, it's again, what don't you want to be doing? What, you know, one one designer doesn't enjoy doing another one may so again it's a very sort of personal thing of what they want to or feel comfortable delegating as well mm -hmm. yeah um all of our VA, you know va is able to come in and, and use your softwares so you know they can use your login you can create logins for them uh, generally it's creating like a new email address of like an admin at info at hello at chances are you may already have something like that set up anyway mm -hmm. and just aren't using it um but depending again on the level of involvement we recommend that the VA does take on a sort of company email and for the outside world is working for your company um rather than you know using their own internal email address if it's purely things you need them to be doing internally and nothing's going to be client facing then that's fine you don't have to um they have their own mcva email address that you can communicate with them through that so it just again purely depends on what the requirements are for for the task that they're going to be doing mm -hmm. but i imagine one of the major questions is which softwares are they able to use because there are so many now you know mm -hmm. have the beauty mm -hmm. of choice um yep. everything from ivy my um what are the other ones design files studio there's another one <laughs> so uh, Emma, yeah. there's more coming on yeah more and more coming on as well um right. Um, and where possible, we match with a VA who already has experience using 
that software because mm -hmm. again that's something designers say i don't have the time to train them on on that um we we offer training internally um so if there's ever something you know that they need help on extra help that's not something that those hours would be billed to you oh, for mm -hmm. for a va getting used right. to yeah a system mm -hmm. um so that's something that you know we we offer and support the vas with on a training side of things as well mm -hmm. um depending on what it is that they need um obviously how you work your way of using a software system can be drastically different to <laughs> how another designer uses it so it's more just getting to grips with how you work another um, thing about the software that came up definitely in our mastermind that we had this past month was even just setting the software up to be done properly you know, mm -hmm. was a challenge for a lot of people and having that part done for somebody, like then all they have to do is plug and play because it's already in the system to set up this way and you get a little tutorial on how to do it that way. And mm -hmm. suddenly it's so much easier because yeah. I know when I was setting up QuickBooks for the very first time, um, I was definitely not doing a very good job and sort of had to start over again and had help to do so and then okay now i know what to do and i just it's already there yeah. <laughs> drop down menu there it is click yeah. keep going yeah. so and those are the sort of time consuming tasks that you don't have you know right. six hours to sit and <laughs> or the knowledge of how to do it the right way you know there's probably a better way to do it and if you're yeah. distracted with a hundred other things are you probably mm -hmm. not setting mm -hmm. it up the right way so yeah would they help with setup of softwares or improving softwares improving softwares yes for sure mm -hmm. uh all of our vas have experience using them um they could certainly help you know set like in asana like set boards up set set project boards up you know mm -hmm. working with a designer to establish what they want those to look like um but creating those templates that then could be duplicated for projects um moving forward yes yes mm -hmm. Um, and again, depending on what the software system is, the VA, some VAs have more experience than others in, in those particular software. So mm -hmm. it's sort of, again, matched on what it is that you're using. Mm -hmm. um, what if, um, you know, this comes up, um, what if uh, a VA leaves? Mm -hmm. um, you know, whilst obviously we don't, <laughs> We hope that doesn't happen. Life happens. You know, this happened in every industry. Um, so if that happened, then we would uh, match you with another VA. Uh, we would work with you to uh, get another VA uh, in place. Um, equally, what happens if you don't like a VA? <laughs> um, we are part of our onboarding process is that you are able to talk to the VA. Um, I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute, but um, you're able to connect with the VA before you commit and sign any agreement or pay any deposit. Um, nine times out of 10, it's a match and you move forward and you're happy working together and um, things are good. We have had um, a couple of occasions where, for whatever reason, um, it's not worked out. It's just not been a personality match which mm -hmm. is only something you can kind of know once you've been working with somebody for a couple of months. Um, and that's something where, you know, we encourage open communication. My door is always open, you know, any question concerns, I always say to designers, look, please, you know, reach out because it, it could well be something that can easily be resolved. Um, you know, if we don't know there's a problem, then how can we resolve an issue? <laughs> it could be something that's as simple as, you know, the VA didn't want to be too overbearing when actually the designer is sitting there thinking, well, I don't know if my VA's got that or not, or is dealing with it. So, you know, it sometimes can be something that's easily resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, just part of those sort of initial teething issues. Um, but sometimes it is, a, it is a bigger, bigger thing and it's just not a fit. And I, you know, had a designer say, look, it's nothing against the VA. She's sweet. She's lovely, <laughs> you know. It's just not for me. Um, for another designer, she's probably wonderful. And 
she does have other designer clients and they're great so it, you know this happens it's 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 life mm -hmm. um so in that instance then again we would work with you to um reassign you to an alternative va if you did choose if you did choose so again lovely so. to have flexibility yes yes yeah. 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 You know, we want you to be happy mm -hmm. uh, ultimately. So it's it's the keeping that line of, of communication open is 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 really important. Mm -hmm. for sure. Um. So what does the onboarding process look like? Um. I touched on it earlier. So we'd have the discovery call. You know, I would have had your inquiry form through. So I already know what software systems you're using, what time zone you're in, all these sort of things. So I can already start in my head to be considering somebody for you before we talk. Um, so we go through everything. We have that initial discovery call, usually takes sort of 20 to 30 minutes. Um, at that point, I uh, go away. I look at the team, think who I think is going to be a good match, uh, look at availabilities um, and assign you a VA uh, based on that. So I would send through then a proposal with a profile of the VA. So you get to review that. Uh, and then the next step would be to um, have a have a call, have a phone call with that BA. Uh, if you want it to be a Zoom call, it could be a Zoom call. Um, so mostly it's a phone call, but again, we can work with whatever you would prefer. Um, and once you've then spoken to the VA, if you feel, yeah, okay, this feels like a match, um, I'm happy to move forward. Then we then send through the um, contract agreement and the deposit invoice, yeah. depending on when you start, um, whether, you know, that's sometimes that first sort of retainer, you know, 10 hours retainer will run over six weeks if you start midway through the month. So it would cover through to the end of the following month. Right. But then any additional and hours. Yeah. Also good to note, like if everybody, anybody's right now chomping at the bit to like get going, consider that it may take you, let's call it three to four weeks to actually get started because first you're gonna go and fill out a form and Melissa's gonna get that and set something up to talk to you one-on-one -on -one for that half hour call. And then after that, after that conversation, okay, I think Betsy's gonna be good for you. Then you have a call with Betsy and decide, okay, you, this is a good match. And then you get going and get started. So if you're thinking, I need this now, <laughs> get, in the, get in the queue and get it, get the conversation started. You don't have to commit to anything until you've had all these phone calls and everything going and then, you're off to the races and got yeah. it going. Yeah, yeah. We're currently, you know, I'm talking to clients now for sort of end of May at the moment. So mm -hmm. then, the, you know, we'll be onboarding for June essentially. Right. Um, you know, from now because that that exactly that Heather, it's it's not an overnight process. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's something that we we do have a sort of system to follow. Right. Um, and that's nice to have because it's it's not just here. Let me throw somebody at you and maybe it works maybe it doesn't you know if there's a little bit more back and forth between the two then mm -hmm. it's going to be a better fit yeah and i want yeah. to obviously be a part of that involved in that you know once clients are onboarded to make sure i'm available for things to be okay um you know that support there in those early days definitely um and yeah i mean if, if there's not a fit then i will say unfortunately <laughs> at the moment um you know it's not a fit and and i don't have anybody that i can confidently say is going to work um mm -hmm. but certainly would put you on a wait list um because things change situations change um you know for whatever reason i've had some designers sort of say okay well you know actually i've i've, I've done this but I, I feel i need somebody that's in person that's boots on the ground mm -hmm. you know, and i fully respect that and accept there is a need for that for some designers um depending on what your structure of your business is you may or may not really have that sort of boots on the ground person um so you know businesses change designers need to change so availability ebbs and flows um but if it's something that you're serious about and if i didn't have anybody right now for you then i would certainly you know put you at the top of our, our wait list yeah okay. yeah so what are the um, other major questions 
so that's so that's sort of what the onboarding process looks like. Um, I said there's a two, there's a two month commitment. Um, so after that, because we like to think this is more for the long term. You know, you, mm -hmm. you're here for a reason. You need help for a reason. The issue you have right now isn't just going to go away <laughs> in 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 two months. Um, it's not sort of ad hoc project su support. It's more sort of longer term. You know, you're at that stage where you're ready to sort of invest in the growth of your business and, and your sanity, <laughs> <laughs> essentially. Um, and yes, our, our plans can be flexible, um, like we said earlier, sort of, you know, upgrading and, and, and downgrading. Um, yeah, I think I sort of I've covered off quite a lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So we can open it up to uh, to questions. So if anybody has a question, you can put it in the chat box. There's also a QA and a um, down at the bottom. If you're on a laptop, there's a little bar of those options. If you're on a iPad or a cell phone, it might be in a different spot, maybe at the top of your screen. If you have any questions that we didn't cover um, already and it, and maybe you're gonna need a moment because we went over a it's, lot yes digest. <laughs> <laughs> but um, i think the beauty of it is the flexibility of being able to say i need this many hours i don't need a giant commitment you know i just want this and and whatever okay so jody asked uh what is the fee for the 10-hour package so so the 10-hour package is uh 550 a month so that's our minimum retainer. Um, basically, anything going up to 20 hours is 55, is 55 an hour. And then 20 hours and over is billed at 50 an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. were signed up to say a 20 hour month package and you actually logged 23 hours that month, then those extra three hours would just be billed on at the end of the month. Um, yeah. Okay. Danielle asks, how do you know when you're ready to hire the sweet spot between just enough work and too much on your plate? Excellent question. That's a good question, yes. <laughs> Rather than getting to that point um, where you're too overwhelmed to then sort of deal with, you know, bringing that person in because there is a level of time involved on your part. Like I said, not essentially training them in the systems, but some sort of handholding in the early days to get them onboarded. Um, you know, some of it's budget. You know, do you have the budget? Can you afford to? Um, again, that's where we sort of become flexible of where we can start at the 10. And, you know, once you then, if that works and you then start to move forward and it's freeing your time up, um, you know, you're gaining 10 hours back in your month <laughs> um, to be doing other things with um, growing at that point. Um, it's I think a lot of it as well is every sort of designer's sort of level of, of stress and threshold is, is different. Um, some are quite happy to be working the evenings and the weekends and, you know, just have cracking on and kind of accepting this is just how it is um I, I think a lot of it is you, you I think mentally you know in your gut like you're just you just hit that point that Friday night when you're having mm -hmm. that glass of wine of like something's got to give like yeah that's probably the best way to determine almost every decision in your whole life yeah. what's yeah. your gut say does your gut yeah. say I've had enough and I can't keep going like this or even just I know I'm about to be like crazy busy in the next three months because I've booked all these jobs yeah, and yeah. before I get to the place where I'm like going to murder people then I better get this on board and get started now before like even with our system when people join the designers collaborative and they come to us with I already have these seven items that I've I've told my client we're going to buy now how do I price it and it's like you you should have come in here weeks ago <laughs> Because you need to learn a little bit about how how the system is set up so that you're not like on the fire flames immediately. <laughs> get yes. ease into it a little bit. Give yourself a little little ramp to get up to speed so that you take flight a little bit smoother. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've had designers, you know, I've spoken to some who are like uh, sort of getting in the calendar for July because mm -hmm. it's, I don't need you now, but I know I've got these two huge full home remodels that I'm gonna start purchasing furniture for. 
oh. at the beginning of July. Well, that's and, really good to know. So you know yeah. that person's going to be crazy in the summer because they booked all this stuff and they're hiring mm -hmm. you for that. So they're already set up. That's brilliant. So, you know, we can mm -hmm. also sort of book ahead. Like it doesn't yeah. have to be now, but we right. can talk, have the conversation, get a sign and get you on the schedule. Yeah. For when you feel you may you may need it. You know, a designer mm -hmm. last week said to me, I just haven't got the headspace right now, but I know in the middle of June, I'm going to be in a better place. I've got less going on, but I want to get in, you know, ready then. I'll have more time to assign to the VA to make sure they get onboarded and support them and all of that. Right. Um, yeah. I also think if you are in that crazy, like my feet are in the fire right now, hiring somebody and having them give you that like, okay, she's going to take care of this <laughs> kind of like ability to sleep better at night is also extremely helpful. You may be going through the craziness of everything, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. better than not so, having the help. Yeah. And we also say, you know, the VA, you know, ultimately you get out what you sort of put in, you know, the VA is only as good as what you give them in terms of your sort of um, brief, um, you know, your sort of, time and 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 support to get them ingrained as well mm -hmm. um you know we've equally had situations where on our side a va sort of turned around to me and said oh, i can't work with this designer like <laughs> <laughs> in the nicest possible way uh, yeah <laughs> yes like yeah so it, it it let's not let it get to that stage mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yep. like so crazy right that, again going in 110 different directions <laughs> and actually not achieving anything yes designers I love you but you can be a lot <laughs> <laughs> the disorganization I always say it's like herding cats it's like come on kitty kitty it's a treat <laughs> organization is just not necessarily innately part of the skill yeah. set but so yeah it's important to a degree we could like yeah, hone it in. Bring it in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right, we have another question. So it says, uh, you may have covered this, but what is the standard average amount of hours? Okay. Um, for certain types of tasks. Excellent question. That's such an unknown, right? Just mm -hmm. trying to envision what 10 hours or more would cover. Is there a general guide so you know what makes sense? Great question. It is a good question and it's a pretty sort of an, an open one because it all depends on um you know number of projects i mean 10 hours a month is half an hour a day mm -hmm. so you know what is that half an hour a day going to give you equally if it's 10 hours a month to you know create my welcome packet like you know if it's more of a standalone task then there's certainly things that can definitely be achieved in that um 20 hours a month uh, I feel the sort of 10, 10 active projects, depending on the level of what you're procuring. You know, when I talk to designers, they're like, okay, yeah, I've got a couple of full home remodels, some are just smaller furnishing projects, some are at different stages. So, you know, when I ask designers, how many projects have you got on at the moment? Again, that's a bit of an open ending question. Um, you know, an hour a day for around 10 active projects, not all like, 3,000 square foot homes, but varying, you know, maybe a kitchen remodel, or a bedroom remodel, you know, an hour a day to help with all of that sort of project management, procurement, tracking, there's ebbs and flows. Um, you know, you might have a couple of projects where the ordering stage is in two, you know, two in one month, where it's like, oh, God, yeah, there's, there's a lot this month. Because right. once everything's been ordered, 20 then goes in, in one oh, day yeah. and then and then nothing for, for a while. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you could do 10 hours in one week. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's where your priority is, okay, clients give me the check. Got to get these orders in. Got to get them done. You know, on a 30 week lead time, let's just get them, get them into the vendor. It might be that that week, you know, that's where the time is spent. Once the orders are made, it's just then tracking them through, obviously, on the back end. And it might be that they've done a more of a lull um a lot of I've also time. noticed because it, it doesn't sound like a lot of a lot of time a half hour a day with a 10 hour package or an hour a day with a 20 hour package a month um it doesn't sound like that much time at all like what well, could you even get done but honestly if you are able to focus on a task 
your phone is not ringing, you're not returning emails, you're not like checking on anything else. If you can focus for one hour on one task, you can actually accomplish a lot. And as designers and, and people who are wearing all of the hats, how often can you actually say, oh yeah, I'm tuning everything out and focused on this, get it done and move on. So a virtual assistant that is like their job to just do that thing that you assign them, can get it done actually pretty quick because they're able to focus. You know, I also say, what would you do with 20 hours a month? Like what? <laughs> it's such a like abstract, like I know we deal in like hourly rates and stuff, but I don't, I don't even like, how do you, <laughs> yeah, start tracking your time. If you're the person that asked that question, start tracking your time and see where you're spending your time on things. Because if you, you know, spent two hours returning emails, then maybe an admin needs to be doing that for you. If you are wasting time with, with this and that, and also what do you enjoy doing and what don't you enjoy doing and, and make those lists. And then that's what you're going to give away. And then you can say, okay, well, those things are taking, you know, 10 hours a month or no, that's 20 hours a month. I should start there. And that yeah. would be the way to yeah. figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? We definitely went over a lot and they were excellent questions. Okay, well, I know Melissa is available for you. Should you have any questions, you can go to her website, which is, Melissa? Uh, mcvirtualassistance.com. There you go. So um, check it out. She has her packages listed there. So if you, if you missed it, you can go and see it in, in black and white for you. Um, all the services and the different packages, you can sign up with, um, you know, with the, the questionnaire and, and start to get into the process. Okay, Elizabeth Guest says, maybe I didn't go through. Oh, uh, do you have a question? Ask, ask it here, because I don't know if maybe I missed it. Let's see. Tracy says, you're awesome. We know this. Yes. Um, okay, he may be here. So having been situations where there's a mistake made, let's say the VA entered and ordered, wait, where'd it go? And ordered improperly or something like that. Is there a policy about that? And I realize this is random. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so. Well, um, you know, mistakes happen. We're all human. Um, they, you know, we haven't thankfully had any any major anything happen like that. Um, a lot of in this industry, you know, custom orders, things that are non-returnable, sizable chunks of, you know, thousands of dollars worth of furniture. Um, we request that designers, you know, sort of sign off on those final quotes. Um, because chances are they're not things that you're buying online, they're things that you're going through a rep, through a vendor, they're sending quotes, specs change, you know, it might be that you actually wanted different nail heads and, you know, sometimes that hasn't been communicated anyway. So anything where it's considerable orders, uh, we would get the designers sign off. Um, it hasn't happened. Um, we do have, MCVA does have business indemnity insurance, so should ever there be anything. <laughs> of a huge issue which you know i'm sure there won't be but you know we do we are insured for things like that as well um so yeah great yeah good okay so i don't know if i've missed any others i'm sorry if you put your question in the chat i'm going to look really quick okay i don't think i missed anything um you know what just for um ease of of mind of everybody, would you type in the chat, Melissa, your um, your email and the website so everyone knows how to contact you. And I will email all of this recording to, to everybody who signed up so you can watch it again, or if you missed it, um, you'll have the recording and I can put Melissa's information in there as well in that email. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, I guess we will end here. So I'm glad if uh, if everybody, thought this was helpful. I know I, I did. So um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do another one in another couple of months and we'll, we'll pick a topic. So if you have some burning question, let us know. We'll focus yeah. on that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, let us know. And yet uh, I've put my email in there. If you know, you want to reach out, if you just have questions, mm -hmm. uh, please reach out. There is a link on the website where you can book a call. 
Um, so, you know, if you just want to do that, um, I do like to have that inquiry form completed as well ahead of when we speak. Um, but yeah, if you just want to touch base and, and we can go from there. Um, yes, I look forward to uh, connecting with some of you. Okay, great. Thank you everybody for attending and thank you, Melissa, for your time. Pleasure. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye.